it's time for Indie Insider Information. When Tony Cowell was here at the MMI HQ this week, we had a chance to talk to him about a pretty controversial idol topic going on right now. But this topic actually relates to and affects many artists and producers at one point or another as they climb the ladder of success. Have a listen to what Tony Cowell had to say about this. A big topic that we were, were going to cover this past Friday on the final in Indie Insider Information was regard uh, the runner-up to American Idol this year, Adam Lambert, and the fact that a little record label, I don't know how little they are, Hi-Fi Recordings, was releasing some session work that he had done for them um, as an album. And basically, all of the fans of Adam absolutely traumatized that this was going to be released, his pre-idol work. I wondered how much you knew about that situation. What is really the story there? Because on the one hand, I felt sorry for this label who had these recordings sitting there. But on the other hand, I, the, the fans are saying they're just trying to cash on in his fame. They should have helped him when they could have helped him. And he had to go on idol and everything else. I mean... Well, yes, I mean, my understanding of the situation is that um, he signed a contract, so they are allowed to put out that material, although I know 19 management are very hot on the case. Of if they can stop it, they will, but I don't know if, if they've got a contract and he's signed it, it will go out. Uh, I think whether it be damaging to his career, I don't think so. No. I really don't. Because I think it's kind of like underground, you know? Well, yeah, I'm a, but, but I, I do agree with what you just said earlier on about it's a record company that, yes, they can legally put it out, and it's their right to do that. That's the question. Are they right to do it? And you say, there's only three major labels in the world with really yeah. the clout and the power yeah. and the funds and the distribution mm. to really make an international star. Yeah. Um, and then you've got all these little labels who are trying and barely making ends meet and barely making the bottom line, most of the time never making the bottom line, investing in new talent like your Adam Lamberts. And they say, why didn't that label launch Adam when they could? And I, I from my perspective, think, well, maybe because they didn't have the funding. You could say that, but I, I could also say that um, maybe they didn't have the marketing clout and knowledge to do that and um, I'd be very careful about what I say here because mm -hmm. there are a lot of people on small labels out there that do know what they're doing but then don't have the finance to be able to do it on a, on a huge scale and I don't have to tell you um, in the business how much it costs a Simon or anybody else to produce an album whether it's Susan's or anyone else's hell of a lot at stake and Simon always says the same thing I have to invest a minimum of a million pounds sterling before you get to the whole wholesale marketing thing but of course, he does it a different way because he's putting people on television and, and creating the audience first before the album or sure. the single yep. goes out. So he's coming from a different corner. But yes, there's a lot of people out there on smaller labels that do know what they're doing but haven't got the marketing budget. It's tough to compete. Like the self-releasing indie artist, it's so tough to compete, which of course is the whole Fame Games mission, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I do. Just if I, if I can add this in, I mean, with, uh, with the Adam Lambert scenario, I'm kind of like proud of him that, you know, he, he had the, the confidence to go to an audition. And mm -hmm. I said this before, I think, on Fame Games, that, look, I don't care if you're a, you know, a guitarist or you were an indie rock band, what's wrong in at least experiencing what goes on on these talent shows? You should know how it works. That's what Tony Cowell had to say. Now quickly over to Paul for a comment. From a songwriter-producer perspective, was Hi-Fi in the wrong for releasing Adam's pre-idol material? First of all, I have to admit, I don't know that much about uh, what kind of contract, what kind of a deal they had, whether, for example, it's very customary for producers to sign a deal, a deals with uh, the writers that in case, for example, the writer gets picked, that they have uh, to be the producer on the record and so on. Maybe they had that, maybe they didn't have that, I don't know. In either case, I think it comes down to an ethical question more than anything else. Is it the right thing to do? And I know a lot of people from a business point of view will say, hey, you know, we spent a lot of time on this guy developing him. Now he's made the big time. Maybe it's partially thanks to us. So why shouldn't we have participation in that somehow? There is no uh, easy, clear-cut answer here for sure. It's got to be perfect. And now it's time to wind down and wrap up by returning to today's theme, Perfect by Fairground Attraction. Two things that struck me while investigating the Adam Lambert pre-idol release by Hi-Fi Recordings. One, Tony's comment regarding 19 management and if they can stop it, they will. And two, Adam Lambert is saying he doesn't want this pre-idol music released. It's a situation that for undiscovered acts will face at one point or another when you finally get a big break. How many of us have those recorded skeletons lurking around in the closet? Graham's smiling. <laughs> 
What I don't like, however, is Bully Boy 19 Management thinking they can stop the underdog label Hi-Fi from doing something that will probably help them a lot financially. Greed or sleazy opportunism? Well, that depends, but at first glance, I don't think so. Adam was 23 years old when he signed contracts with them. He was a big boy. If he never wanted those songs released, he should have got his house in order before making Hollywood Week. Next, Adam Lambert pretty much spitting on the label and the people who worked with him on those tracks before he was THE Adam Lambert. Is that how you treat people? Like you're too good for them now that you're famous? Has fame, what Tony Cowell calls the new Class A drug, taken over his life already? It seems a little premature and totally immature to me. He's no Freddie Mercury or Michael Jackson yet. On the other hand, this could be just the very pathetic wheels of the manic but lazy media machine at work. Whatever the case, a lesson for us all to observe and take heed, like the lyrics in today's theme tune. Life is too short to play silly games. From me, DJ Cryer, have a great weekend. And remember, it's a big weekend. So be sure, extra sure, to go out and rock somebody's world.